games left in the season. What do you want to get out of these last couple of games? I um, mean, just keep playing the way we've been playing. You know, we keep working our habits, get healthy, obviously. You know, uh, we're almost there. We're almost back healthy. You know, got G Hill, um, you know, kind of still out. Uh, you know, I think believe Kyle's back today. So, trying to get the full strength. But just keep working our habits as we've been doing these last, uh, you know, this last week or so. Oh, for sure. I mean, first of all, you definitely want to be, you know, playing at a, at a really good rhythm going into the postseason. I mean, listen, the postseason after the regular season is pretty much like two or three days right after. It's not much like long of a down period, much shorter than also. Period. So uh, you want to kind of keep that same rhythm, and uh, hopefully, you know, you, you're playing good basketball going on the stretch. Do you feel like you guys are, are at the rhythm where you're comfortable with how you're going to go into the postseason? Uh, we still got five games left, so uh, it's kind of still a little bit too early, especially for our team. Trying to get everyone and get all the pieces working together before the playoffs. Do you even pay attention to to the playoff seeding race right now, or do you just focus just strictly on getting bodies? Out? No, I mean I see I see where the teams are and see where they're lined up, but I don't I don't pay too much attention to it um, because I, I mean we've been playing every other day, you know, and uh, we play every other day this week with with them back to back. So um, you know, I haven't you know like given a lot of time to the seedings and things of that matter. I think at the end of the day. Um, you know, one and two is pretty much locked up. Um, you know, eight kind of seems like it's going to go be there. You know, with Milwaukee, maybe I don't know they could catch uh, a couple teams, maybe. But um, whatever happens, happens. At the end of the day, no matter where we are, you know, we'd be prepared and ready to go. Given all the noise this season, both on and off the court, are you looking forward to your zero dark twenty three more this season than potentially other? Uh, I mean, for me, my focus hasn't changed, so it doesn't matter to me. Um, you know, personally, I think. Uh, this season has been, uh, you know, obviously we all know how the season has been, you know, uh, with our with our ball club and you know all the noise that's uh, either irrelevant or relevant, whatever the case may be. But um, you know, me, you know, maintaining my focus hasn't changed. Along those lines, given guys you brought in that haven't really had the playoff experience that some of the other ones had, is there any way to kind of teach them how to weed that out during the, the postseason? Uh, well, I think uh, I mean you just keep the main thing the main thing, and you know when the postseason happens, is that we. We're here preparing for a, a, a victory, you know, one game at a time. And that's all that matters. I mean, the outside noise doesn't matter. I mean, in the postseason, you lose one game, it's the end of the world. You win one game, everybody's praising you. But, you know, I, I've always kind of stayed even keel throughout the postseason, just knowing the, the narration of, of from game to game. Considering you guys beat Toronto not that long ago, what does tonight represent as an opportunity? Uh, should you, you know, take care of it? We just want to play well. We want to play well. We didn't play well in the first half of that game. They pretty much dominated us in the second half. We kind of turned it around and played well. Uh, but we want to try to play well. I mean, it's not because we're playing against Toronto. It's because we we have no other options right now because we're trying to find a rhythm and, and continue to be a, I mean, as, and see what we can make of this season, you know, for our ball club. So, uh, you know, it's a good opponent. It's a worthy opponent, and we look forward to that challenge. But, uh, you know, beating them or losing to them, you know, it depends on how we play is what's, what matters most. Uh, that's never been my plan. That's been y'all narrative. That's never been my plan. My plan is to play one game at a time and see how I feel after that game. And I've been fortunate enough to be a part of every game this year. So, um, But that's never been my plan. I didn't come into the season saying, okay, we're going to play 82 games this season. It's my plan is to be as healthy as I can, work on my body, train myself every day to be available for my teammates every game. And if that allows me you know, to play tonight as I am, then let's go, you know, and uh, you know, hopefully I'll be in a position where I'm able to go on Thursday as well. So take it day by day. You have all the changes you've made over the years, whether it's diet, conditioning, mm -hmm. etc. What's made the biggest difference for you? Sleep. Sleep. Yeah. Sleep. Did you watch that every day? I did. What stood out to you about it? What do you mean? What stood out? What stood out to everybody? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, come on. Yeah, um, I mean, listen, that, that kid was, uh, he was on fire. I mean, but he did it in all, first of all, he made himself a lot of money. That's the first thing I thought. Obviously, I don't have, I'm not with the whole college thing, so I don't care about that. So he made himself a lot of money last night, and not because of the way he was shooting, but uh, he was doing it all. He was getting into the lane and ones, back doors, lobs, verticality, you know, with Matthews at the peak, showing his athleticism, and then when the game started to kind of get, you know, Michigan cut it to 12, boom, he hits another backbreaker. You know, Michigan kind of gets it to 10, boom, he shows up again. 
I mean, listen, at the end of the day, the, I mean, Villanova was the best team in college basketball this year. And um, when the national player of the year is on the sideline with four fouls for the majority of the second half and you're still winning, it lets you know how great of a team you are. You know, so, um, you know, Dante was obviously he was he was great. Um, you know, the kid Bridges was had a I mean, he was shooting the, the heck out of the ball. Um, the one kid number four, I call him Baby Millsap. Um, Pascal, I call him Baby Millsap. He was, listen, he's a matchup problem, you know, so. But the best team won, and uh, I'm actually happy they won a little bit because we don't really speak that, the other team's name around here. But I do feel, I, I mean, I feel for the kids, though. Did you see Stoneman? Who? I did not. I did not. I did not. I did not. And, uh, listen, he had to play big minutes last night, too, because, you know, Big Wagner. So, uh, uh, you know, he had a pretty good game as well.